I am nearing the end of my pregnancy journey, so I wanted to start making little updates before things start to progress really quickly. Today is Monday, February 19th, and it is the last day of my 39th week. I'll be 40 weeks tomorrow. Tomorrow is my due date. It is Wednesday, February 21st. Yesterday was my due date. I didn't check in with you guys because nothing major happened. My energy was super low yesterday. I spent majority of the day honestly in bed. I was having some light back cramps, Braxton Hicks. That was pretty much the gist of it. Last night though, at 3 a.m., I woke up out of my sleep to a mild contraction. And I didn't really think too much of it. I was like, noted, okay. But then I woke up three more times after that same way. And then at 5 a.m., I started to track my contractions and i was sleeping in between them and i've been having them roughly since 5 a.m is when i started tracking them and it's now like 10 30. i've been having them like roughly every 10 minutes and the time varies like some of them will be like a minute some of them will be like 20 seconds so yeah we also have a baby appointment today and they're gonna do another ultrasound it's the 40 week appointment so they're gonna remeasure her I'm, I'm probably going to do a cervical exam today. I have not done one so far. I've declined all of their attempts to get my cervix checked. <laughs> so yeah, now that things are actually happening, I think I'm going to do it. And one of my contractions this morning actually made me lose more of my mucus plug. And then I lost more after that too. And... I kind of figured I didn't lose all of it, but I wasn't sure, but it was like a lot more this time. So things are happening. We shall see. I'll keep you guys updated. We just got out of the baby appointment, still having contractions roughly 10 minutes apart. They're still feeling like heavy period cramps. I did get a cervical exam. I am about 50% effaced and one centimeter dilated. So things are definitely progressing. So good, baby. Especially your heart rate. The baby's heart rate. I no longer have a bump. Yeah, why does it feel like I still have a bump? <laughs> Hey guys, I have missed you guys so much. I took a little bit of time off of YouTube, but I am back and I'm hoping that I can be consistent again, but cut me some slack if I am a little slow on uploading because it has been, it has been rough over here. So I'm going to be telling you guys about my labor and delivery experience and just rewinding a little bit throughout my pregnancy i took a lot of time just learning about birth and just all of these like different things and i had a birth plan and for most of most of me at that time was very much set on this is what i want but we're gonna get into what happened and i'm okay with the fact i'm gonna spoil spoiler alert I'm okay with the fact that it didn't go as planned. I feel like this whole experience really allowed me to just lean into my faith and just trust in God. And it also reminded me of how strong I am as a woman. So I had my first contraction on February 20th. I think it was a Tuesday. I'm hoping I'm getting the dates correct at like 3 a.m. And it was something that woke me up out of my sleep. And I was like, okay, whoa. I definitely feel this and I didn't start tracking them until like 5 or 6 a.m. and I literally tracked like pretty much all of them they were 10 minutes apart and it wasn't anything like crazy that day it was just like okay I notice it but I'm able to go about my day and do normal things the next day they were like five to seven minutes apart definitely ramping up that afternoon ramping up some more that evening ramping up some more and by, by that evening 
it was getting so intense that I was inward and I had to stop for every contraction and I had to breathe through them and they were getting more and more intense as the time passed I did not sleep that night and like I said they were like five to seven minutes apart so they were coming um, I was also starting to pray with each contraction because it was getting that intense that I was really just asking God to be with me and to just help me because I have never experienced something like that, you guys. In addition to having contractions, I also had back labor. So we're going to get into why further along because I didn't know. I had no idea what was going on. So I didn't sleep that night on the 22nd we went to the hospital so now this is thursday so i labored at home for two days um we checked in we got there at like 11 a.m same thing guys like it was so intense i was having to stop for each contraction and breathe um so i went to triage and they checked me and i was three centimeters dilated and i don't remember because they kept kind of going back and forth with my effacement percentage but I was like 80 or 90% effaced. And she also, when she did the cervical check, um, she literally like said she couldn't find my cervix or something. And she was like hurting me. And with like doing all that she was doing, she ended up getting a lot of my mucus plug out and the bloody show because I hadn't had any bloody show at this point but I had had some mucus plug, but not to the degree of what she took out. So she took out a lot of it, TMI. <laughs> um, so yeah, so based off of everything that she saw with how I was progressing, she was like, you're not going home. You are definitely having a baby. So one of the, I think she was like a nurse. One of the nurses walked me over to my labor and delivery room. So walking down there, um, I didn't have a wheelchair, I walked, and I had to like stop like twice because I had contractions. Um, and they also monitored me, they hooked me up to like the um, machine that monitors the baby and the contractions, and she confirmed at this point I was having contractions like every four minutes. So yeah, walking down to the labor and delivery room and I had to stop like twice because I had contractions and they were approximately every four minutes so sometimes they would come like sooner so and especially if i was walking and doing stuff i felt like they came a bit sooner than if i was just like doing nothing so yeah i got to the room and i gave them my birth plan and they were like cool we're gonna tell the doctor the doctor's gonna come in and check you soon um so i was like okay cool um i do remember that in between contractions i was able to communicate and stuff but when they would ask me stuff when i was having a contraction i would like be my voice would be super low and i would try to answer questions and stuff but sometimes i would just ignore them and wait for it to be over because it was that intense so yeah i remember that when i was having the contractions i could not sit or lay down because it felt more intense so i chose to just like stand and kind of hold on to something cameron was also helped my husband cameron was also giving me counter pressure with contractions and that was kind of helping a bit to alleviate some of it but because i had the back labor too that just really made things a lot worse than they should have been so yeah they asked me if I wanted the epidural and I declined. Basically in my birth plan, what I had wanted was a natural vaginal delivery. I wanted it to be unmedicated. So I declined everything except for their hospital policy was that um, I had to have, I forget what it's called, but it's the IV that is just placed in you, but it's not connected to anything. But in case something goes south, they just want it to be fast so they can just like hook you up to it. So I had to do that, so that was fine. I still have the scar from it, it's right here. Um, so yeah, so I was trying my best to adhere to my birth plan. And 
My husband was also trying to encourage me to adhere to it as well. So I labored from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. standing up with these intense contractions and my husband standing with me this entire time to doing back pressure, which I'm so grateful and thankful for my husband and just him being my life partner in general because I could not have asked for a better support in that moment. Also, the atmosphere <laughs> in that room was completely silent. I didn't want anything playing. I just wanted to be able to focus and I was praying through like every single one of those contractions, you guys. So, <laughs> so yeah, at 6 p.m., remember I told you guys I didn't sleep the night before and I kept waking up the, the night before that because I kept having contractions. Even though they weren't as intense the first night, I still kept waking up. Then the night after, didn't really sleep. So now at this point, I am exhausted on top of having contractions and back labor. I was literally like standing falling asleep in between contractions and I was just mentally and physically tired. So at this point, I did decide to go against my birth plan and get the epidural because I wasn't progressing also. I stayed at three centimeters, same effacement, all of that. My water hadn't broke, so yeah. I was like, I don't know how much longer this is going to be. I'm not progressing and I'm so tired. So I decided to get the epidural. And if you guys don't know, when you say that you want it, it's not going to be within like two minutes that you're going to get it because it depends on where the anesthesi anesthesiologist oh my gosh, is in the hospital, how many patients they have lined up and where you are in that. So it could take some time. Also, in order to get the epidural, you have to be still and sitting for 10 minutes. So I was a little bit like panicky and anxious, just a little bit at this point because I didn't know how I was gonna be able to sit because I was literally trying to like sometimes in the span of all these hours of me standing, but it would hurt. So I would literally just like stand back up. So I told the nurse that I would try to practice like sitting or like, I guess like lay sitting in the hospital bed um, so that I could get used to the pain. So she said, okay, that's fine. So I did that and whilst I was do practicing <laughs> to endure the new level of pain, um, they were also putting an IV in me because you have to have one when you have the epidural. So, and I also had to have one bag of the IV in me before I got the epidural, which took like, I think 30 minutes. So thankfully the anesthesiologist didn't take like too long and he was super nice and quick and all of that. And I felt reassured I felt reassured. So I got the IV, got the epidural, and I started to feel relief pretty soon after. And also I wasn't completely numb and I should have been. I could still wiggle my toes and kind of move my legs, which I was kind of fine with because it kind of freaked me out beforehand, like not being able to move. I don't know. I felt like I felt like I felt like it would have made me panic, but the fact that I could move a little bit was was great. So I felt like a little bit of the pain, but not really like how it was. Definitely not how it was before. So I also found out that the positioning of baby girl was in an OP position, meaning that she is head down, but her face is facing my spine and the optimal position should be that she's head down and her the back of her head is facing my spine so that is why i was in labor for that long and that is why i had back labor because she's not working with the contractions to go down she's doing the opposite and like pushing against it so apparently they said that this is one of the most like painful positions that the baby could be in for like the mom's labor so they told me that i did really well for going this long without getting some relief so 
that made me feel kind of proud of myself i have not updated you guys in quite some time so we ended up coming to the hospital at 11. i was having contractions every few minutes for a few hours so we got here we went to triage they checked me and confirmed that i was contracting every few minutes and they checked my um, cervix and i was three centimeters dilated and like 90 percent effaced super soft so that was a good sign and they were like yeah you're not going home we're gonna put you in the room so i'm in the room now it's like i think it's like eight o'clock honestly so i've been here that long and the last cervical exam that i got i was like five centimeters dilated so things are progressing baby is facing my spine which is called op i don't even know and it makes things a lot more intense and you get back labor and whatever so i made it to five centimeters and guys it was so difficult so i ended up deciding to get the epidural and i do not regret it because i was so physically and mentally exhausted and just the instant like relief it wasn't like a hundred percent relief but at this point i think like i'm pretty fine so yeah we shall see what happens also when she did the cervical exam the last one she said that she felt baby's head and all of the cervical exams that i've done they said they felt baby's head and the last one though she said that she felt like baby had a lot of hair so that was really exciting to me because i don't know i wanted her to have a good head of hair because that's cute <laughs> okay if i have another update and i'm able to update then I will, but I'll see you guys later. You okay? So I got the epidural and let's see. I think at this point, so now we're at like 6 p.m. At this point, I wanna say like not too long after, I, the doctor checked me and I was around like five centimeters. And I don't even remember how much long after that, but I wanna, let's say it was like 10, between 10 and midnight is when i just was continuing to not progress so they told me that um it would be probably best if i started a round of pitocin so pitocin is a synthetic form of oxytocin and oxytocin is your body's natural form of that hormone and it's what helps labor to progress and pitocin the synthetic form would hopefully allow things to progress in my labor so i said okay and we did like two or three rounds i want to say i honestly don't even remember like how much it was um and yeah it was taking a while for me to dilate um my face mode was great though my cervix being soft was great it was just the dilation so they kept coming in they kept checking me um one thing that was pretty scary was they told me beforehand like pretty early on into me being in the hospital that if they rush into the room and start having to flip me over and move me into different positions and they're not saying why it's probably because something's going on with the baby and they just want to react fast so that they can like fix the situation so they did do that quite some time like her heart rate kept dipping or they wouldn't be able to um see it so they would come in and put me in all these crazy different positions one of uh, the nurses also had me do some side lying on a peanut ball in hopes that that would help with the dilation so i did that as well i was able to get some rest um because i had the epidural and some relief so that was really nice and I felt like that really helped me to gain a little bit more energy for when it was time to push. Update, my water broke during a cervical exam. So that's, that's that. <laughs> and that means that things are progressing even more now. So at around, I don't, I don't even remember what time it was. It was sometime early, early in the morning. 
the doctor came and checked me and when she checked my cervix my water broke so i i believe it was a result of her checking my cervix but my water finally broke and then a couple hours after that at like 5 a.m is when she came and checked me and she said you are complete you're all the way dilated all the way effaced and it is time for you to push so i started pushing at 5 a.m and it was tough you guys and at this point i regained like a lot of mobility and feeling in my legs so i was basically pushing and feeling everything it took so long to get her to come out literally so long that the first doctor that i started with her shift ended and another doctor came in like it was that long i pushed for like almost three hours and she finally came out at 7 45 a.m and literally right before like the final like few pushes the second doctor was saying if you're not able to push her out i can see her head like they could see her head but it just wasn't enough they were saying that um if i wasn't able to push her out they were gonna have to use the vacuum and i really didn't want them to do that so i feel like that gave me like the extra oomph and cameron said that at the final push that i did with that extra oomph the doctor literally grabbed her head and pulled her out so I was so happy that I was able to not have them use the vacuum. So yeah, she came out, she didn't cry right away, and I think that was a little worrisome, but like a few seconds later she was crying. She was completely healthy, completely fine. I got to see my placenta, I asked to see it, so that was kind of cool. I wanted to see the organ that my body was growing, along with her obviously, but I just wanted to see it. So that was pretty cool and I think they just they just like discarded it. So that was kind of uneventful. <laughs> but anyways. So yeah, they weighed her and she was 5 pounds 14 ounces. So she was a super super tiny baby and I had her at 40 day 40 40 days. <laughs> I had her at 40 weeks 3 days. So she was born on February 23rd and yeah it took a lot to get this little girl out but she's here and that's all that matters <laughs> she's so pretty okay. and there are gonna be some <laughs> fun in it. goodness you're so precious Wow, so stylish. <laughs> you look beautiful. <laughs> I'm hoping that I didn't forget any details. Honestly, like all of the days were like bleeding together after that. Still kind of now, honestly. I feel like time is going by so fast. She is already a month old, which is insane to me. Like that makes no sense at all. The rest of the time in the hospital was great. We had the best nurses and they gave her a little bit of extra attention. You okay? What happened? They gave her a little bit of extra attention because her weight is considered to be like on the smaller range but she passed everything with flying colors she did also have jaundice but apparently that's pretty common with newborns i'm also breastfeeding and i had no problems with her she latched on pretty much immediately and breastfeeding has been has been fine and she has gained almost three pounds she's eight pounds now so she is doing really really great so yeah that was my labor and delivery experience and i forgot to tell you her name her name is karina and we're calling her Corey for short. Alright, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.